Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer. I'm Azakalith Rift Previews. Today we're going to review Anamorphine. Anamorphine is a game on the Steam store that normally retails for $19.99. I actually bought this game from Humble Bundle. I actually bought it on sale for $8.49. I think that's lower than it's ever been on Steam. Uh, for whatever reason, when I bought this game, it still had VR support. And today, as of today, or, or some time ago, it's no longer listed as VR supported. I don't know why the developer took away official VR support, but it's no longer there. I can confirm that VR still works with this game, but I would caution anybody who buys it in the future for the VR experience to watch out, because I don't know how long that, that that's still gonna work. Getting VR to work is kind of strange in this game. Um, so you know I experienced this on Windows Mixed Reality, the Samsung Odyssey Plus. And the way that I got VR to work is first you start the game, you know, put on your headset, you know, get it running, start the game. Steam is going to give you a warning that the game is going to start in theater mode. Don't worry about that, let it start in theater mode. And from there you can look at your desktop screen. And you can mouse over the button that says VR. Go ahead and click on VR. And then what will happen is it'll render to your headset after you click on that. So you really have to look at the desktop screen. And from there, just click on VR, the VR button, just click on it. From that point on, you should be able to see the game in VR and also control it from VR. Uh, I use both motion controllers and the Xbox One gamepad. For me, it was a very similar experience with both. Uh, I would say go ahead and you might as well use a controller uh, gamepad over motion controllers because the motion controllers are, are just being used as a joystick. Uh, the good news about this game is that there is full locomotion and smooth turning, although I'm gonna put a little caveat there that I'll talk about in a little bit. And there are some options, but there's not a whole lot of options. So as far as locomotion, you do have like this sort of teleportation style. And you do have, again, the full locomotion. There's also something about uh, a pointer. Uh, don't use that because this game does not require you to grab anything at all. So this game is just basically walking from point A to point B. And at various times, you'll have to gaze in certain directions, look at certain objects, or maybe get really close to certain objects to be able to interact them, to get them to work properly. So this is really, truly, 100% a walking simulator. It took me about two hours to finish the game, and that was with experiencing a few bugs. The bugs that I experienced are very important to talk about. One of them is almost game breaking. Uh, in this game, for whatever reason, at the point that I got to the hospital, the door in front of me closed and I couldn't get out of the enclosed room. And the same thing happens here. As you'll see the door closed, right now I'm trapped in this room. I cannot get out. There is nothing that progresses it. What you have to do is what I did there. You have to teleport through the door. So by default, I was using full locomotion and smooth turning. It's not called that in the options. I believe it's called, I forget what it's called, but whatever it's called, it lets you do full locomotion. You have to go back to the teleport option and you have to actually teleport through the door. And I had to do that several times. So it's a game breaking bug. Fortunately, I worked at, I worked out a workaround to those bugs where you can't progress because you can't go through the door, but you can teleport through the door and thus be able to progress in the game. Uh, it's, I think it's a major bug. The other bug that I experienced is pathing issues, and you'll see that later on in the video towards the end when there's several bike riding moments in this game and your bike just gets stuck on the path. It, I don't know why it doesn't seem like it should get stuck but all of a sudden you can't move forward and you can't move sideways and <laughs> trying to reverse and I had to try all sorts of different things and it really took a lot of patience for me to get around these bugs the doors being closed and you not being able to progress and having to change to teleport to teleport through the doors to progress in the game and all the pathing issues during the bike riding 
sections, especially in the desert areas, where you really have to be patient there in order to progress forward. Uh, in this game, there's also a lot of uh, backtracking. So you'll see here that you go forward and I think there's a, the door closed and then you have to go back and then it looks different or there's like a maze and you just have to keep going around in circles and stuff slowly changes. There's a lot of that in this game. There's also some invisible barriers as you saw there where you just can't get past a certain area. I don't know why, but there are some invisible barriers in this game along with some clipping. The textures are pretty bad. To be honest, this is an ugly looking game. Now the good points. <laughs> there are some good points. There are, there are some very cool moments, some very poignant moments, some very impactful moments during this game. It's only two hours long, so it's not that bad of, of, a, of a game that the issues you encounter will stop you from finishing the game. Although I did read there are two alternate endings. I believe I got the bad ending. I'm not sure. The game ended rather abruptly. And the funny thing is, your headset turns black and you hear music and you're like, what What? Ha what just happened? Did the game crash? Uh, did I, is there is this a bug? And it turns out I took off my headset, looked at the desktop screen and it was rolling credit. So the game was over. So that's what happens in this game. That This tells you something about all the bugs, all the problems with this game. I don't know if it's just VR, VR mode. I have a suspicion it's not just VR mode. I have a suspicion that also just the normal 2D game has all these bugs as well. I cannot recommend this game because of all these bugs. Even without the bugs though, it's still not what I would call a good walking simulator. A lot of the assets are repeated. So while there are some very impactful moments and some very emotional moments in this game, and truth be told, there is some uh, good analogies, some, some good uh, metaphors for the depression, the drug abuse, the mental illness issues, the just befalling a tragedy with the broken arm and not being able to play the cello, and the relationship between these two between this couple and there are some very nice analogies metaphors in this game that the game provides and you'll see the world it goes upside down and it's all strewn about and there's this sense of of loss and this sense of tragedy and this just sense that you know the whole world's turned upside down and the game does a good job of conveying that through the little techniques it does. And there are several of these throughout the, the, the game. However, the game overstays its welcome. Several themes are repeated. Several of the tricks are repeated. So it loses the impact, especially, you know, I, I, I've already been through that once. Now you're making me do it again. And a lot of the assets are repeated. A lot of the environments are repeated. You see this apartment, you're gonna see it over and over and over again. And in a little, little bit, you're gonna see the desert. The desert and the bike ride is repeated over and over and over again. So while there are some cool techniques, like you uh, entering a new world or you're looking at a, a photo by the end that was just the world that you were in, those are all cool the first, maybe even the second time, but these techniques are just repeated over and over again. And by the end of the two hours, you're like, wow, I'm, su I'm surprised so many, of, so much of this stuff was repeated several times in such a short game. And the visuals are just ugly. Uh, the saving grace for this game is the soundtrack, uh, if, especially if you love the cello. Um, it's a really good music soundtrack. It's really the best thing about this game But the story itself. It's just like beating a dead horse. We got it. Okay I got it after the first hour and it seemed like a lot of the themes a lot of the message uh, uh, Was just like beating a dead horse. Okay. I've seen that already. You've already showed me that I already know that and you're now you're repeating the same message again to me you're showing me the same thing again just in a slightly different way. 
So overall, I cannot recommend this game. It's just too much of a buggy mess. And even without the bugs, I, I, I still don't think it's a good walking simulator. I'm going to have to rate this game uh, 3.5 out of 10. Just the bugs are, are unforgivable. They're just all over this game. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.